I have almost just called 911 trying to get this. Welcome back. It's been a minute. Um, I've been so busy. Also had fall break and just went and visited family. I went to Arizona. And now I'm back and I've just been basically non-stop since I've been back home in Indiana. It's been pretty wild. I thought I would get on here and kind of talk a little bit about what my Monday is looking like because it is Monday, unfortunately. I am starting to get that like little bit of, I don't want to say the word dread because that's really negative, but just starting to kind of just having to really pump myself up to get into working right now. And it's probably because it's been non-stop busy, go, 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 so many evaluations to complete, and that's just the nature of the job, and October apparently is that kind of month. <laughs> and so I've completed, let's do a check on how many evals I've completed this year. So I've completed around 13 and eight of those were done in October alone. And that's a lot of evaluation meetings to complete and reports to complete in one month. I mean, I think it might be normal for some psychology. So I was trained again, I was trained in Colorado and Colorado is very different than most other states, but in Colorado, or at least in Denver public schools where I worked, evaluations was a very, equally distributed part of my job. And so I did a lot less evaluations and I did a lot more mental health minutes, service delivery minutes, because in Colorado, um, school psychologists and social workers are put onto kids' IEPs. Um, in a lot of other states, that's not the case. And so in other states that I've worked at or currently work in, I do not deliver direct service minutes for kids on IEPs or individualized education programs. Um, and so with that being said, um, in the states I do work in, I am doing a lot of evaluation. I know there are some psychs who do like 100 evaluations a year. That's wild. I cannot even imagine because I would say even like 40 feels like a lot. I think that's gonna, that's pretty normal. I'm going to start getting into the groove of doing 40 to 50 to 60 evals a year. Um, but currently it's been kind of crazy to have like six within one week is a lot. <laughs> that's where your brain starts to be like, oh, oh gosh. But this morning is Monday, and so I got ready, I made myself some coffee, and got some water. My priority today is to kind of do some scheduling and planning. I feel like I've been in survival mode the last few weeks, so I've just been looking at the students who are quickest due. So I'm like, oh gosh, I have to put all of my focus on these three, four kids because they're due immediately. These are last minute evals. A lot of my evals this year have been expected to be expedited. I've been finding out about re-evals last minute it's been pretty wild so i feel a little bit discombobulated so what i've been doing is focusing on the ones that are coming up quickest and now that i got six of them out of the way i can kind of look and say oh shoot now i have six more due in the next two weeks and see what i need to be doing with those so i'm going to be scheduling testing I'm i have to schedule some meetings for some evaluations so i need to reach out to some parents i need to kind of get my brain wrapped around what kids I need to send rating skills out to, what kiddos need cognitives done right now, what kiddos I need to start their reports and things like that. And so it's a lot of planning, a lot of prepping and a lot of scheduling. And I would have to say that one thing about being a virtual school psychologist, but not just a virtual school psych, but any school psych is I would say scheduling is one of the hardest or just if you have ADHD like me, one of the least favorite parts of your job, but being virtual, it is kind of tricky because I have to manage scheduling um, sometimes multiple schools. So sometimes you have one school, sometimes you have multiple schools, sometimes you have multiple districts. And that means maybe you have multiple proctors who are helping you with in-person testing. And so not only do you have to schedule around the, the kids' schedule, their lunchtime, recess, their favorite, you know, related arts, so PE, music, math, li or not math, <laughs> library, and things like that. Um, so not only have to schedule on the kids' schedule and the teacher's schedule, but you have to schedule on your proctor's schedule and then the district schedule, and if you have multiple districts, that as well. So it's a lot of moving parts sometimes being a virtual school psychologist, but it's manageable, and it mostly for me is just like, I would say like hyping myself, just like hyping myself up to get the least favorite parts done because it feels like the least rewarding part of the job. 
If you have ADHD like me and a lot of the students that you might work with, doing tasks that have little immediate reward is very hard. But it can feel nice to get stuff checked off your list. So um, the way I deal with it is I put stuff in my planner, even down to like scheduling students testing. And then I have a little bit of a dopamine hit by crossing it off. And so I get to actually cross off a lot of stuff from last week, which makes me very happy. Did I do that? I don't know if I did any of that last week. I did that. I finished the student's eval last week. I presented his data last week. Okay, so that's from last week. I need to move on to my current week. I like this planner. What I'm going to do is look at last week and see if there's anything that I need to carry over to this week. And there sure are, of course. This week I need to send these students rating skills. I like to color coat. I can't find one of my whiteout sticks. This one's broken. I don't know how to fix it. <laughs> Found this little guy. Let's see if he works. Oh, he works even better than my pink one. I just like pink because I don't know. If you have multiple schools, multiple districts, or not, I recommend color coding and just kind of assigning a color in your brain that always goes with either a school, uh, a task, a district, etc. That's a very obviously basic statement. <laughs> People know that. Uh, I'm silly goose. Oh gosh, I'm stressed. It's really easy to get like very overwhelmed and for me, I don't know about you, but to feel like overwhelmed and then let that lead to being frozen and feeling or feeling like down on yourself and feeling um, like if you miss one thing or you forgot to send this one rating scale or whatever it is, forgot to schedule this thing way far in advance, da da da. It's really easy to start like being hard on yourself and feeling a bad practitioner. It's just not true. Think about all the people who you work with who if they make a mistake you give them grace and kindness and love and say don't worry about it we're all it's all stressful right now it's hard right now it's busy and you're doing the best you can that's the kind of grace i give others and then i tend to not do that for myself and it's just like a little note i want to make to everybody else that i get really hard on myself if i'm not perfect and if i don't have everything done the way it should be and I think it's because we just all have these high expectations. In the U.S., our work ethic is real skewed, right? I have extremely high work ethic, but it's almost to my detriment. Like, I work way too many jobs at all points in time. So I always have a side job. I always keep my schedule very busy. Overall, I just wanted to say that give yourself grace, the grace that you give others. And I think that's one way to get through this job and this life because life is hard and our jobs are hard. I'm just going to continue scheduling out this week and check emails. That's another thing I do on Mondays. I'm looking at emails, catching up, getting distracted already. See, I'm in the middle of scheduling and now I'm reading emails instead. It's just my ADHD is definitely something I struggle with every day. What did she ask us? Testing acronyms. SOP related. SOP related. Did you care? I am going to my test description. That I share with my case managers. It might help. So I <laughs> I can talk about what I'm doing right now. I made this document that's called test descriptors. So in a state that I've worked in, case managers will they will be the ones to create consents and include all the tests and the descriptors of the tests for parents to read. And so I made this document that includes all the tests I generally use, so all my cognitives, adaptives, achievements, and social emotional rating skills and assessments that I use regularly so that they can go and copy and paste them into their consent forms. And so that's really helpful. So I was just sharing that with somebody. Like people often recreate wheels that are already made. And so that's something that I'm going against this year. I've done a lot of organizing in one of my districts. I created this really nice Google Drive for the psychologist. I was the first psych hired on the district. So when I got hired, there was no leadership. 
I had no not, no idea what was going on. So I started creating like an organization system as people came on and then we were all adding to it. And then most of those people were let go last year and new people came on. And I've shared this psych drive that I've been working on for the last year. And then people like to like create new things. And I'm like, it's already in the psych drive, put it in the psych drive, just put it there, put it there. And then like people do all this extra work when there's already a document for it. And so that's one thing I think in districts that's always tricky, like having a solid organization tool and it's different when you're in a small district versus or a rural, rural district versus a city district. So like Denver Public Schools is so high, it's so many hundreds, I mean thousands and thousands of kids, but hundreds of staff members as well, even hundreds of psychs and social workers, not hundreds of psychs, but like they were all one department. So psychs and social workers, there was I think around almost 300 psychs with and social workers. And so there were all these systems already in place, like there are all these organization tools and so if you go into a small rural district, just be prepared. You may or may not find a district doesn't have any um, organization for psych resources and you might make your own. You might try to ask the team where they're already at and things like that. And so that's something I've come up against. Wow, I just got done with hour 10 of working straight. Um, I think a lot of people think that if you're virtual, you don't work as much, but you do work a lot. Um, and it comes in waves, right? Like it's it'll be really busy weeks and then weeks where yes, you can take a nap in the middle of the day maybe if you have no meetings and then I just like comp my time so I'll work later that day. Um, but today after I got off a uh, videoing last, I tested a child and so I did um, a Wyatt assessment with a kid. We were writing sentences um, and then I had a meeting with a counselor to do kind of consultation and teaching. So she needed help with how to do an FBA. So I'm gonna be doing an FBA with her and kind of leading her through the process and teaching her about what a functional behavior assessment should look like or what I like mine to look like. And she can kind of take it as she learns and make her own. Bless you. And so it was really nice to meet with her. So we planned for one of our students' FBAs. And then after that, I've done a lot of report writing today, um, a lot of emailing to see if people can finish rating skills. Um, and then I had a student support meeting, so kind of like MTSS or RTI that I did today. And um, that was really nice, actually, because last week I met with the district leaders on some protocols for functional behavior assessments and behavior interventions. And so I was able to take it to the team and tell them like, oh, here's a good new process for us to do. And so we just got done with that. Oh yeah, we got done with the SST meeting and then I interviewed a teacher, like wow, it all blurs together. I stayed on later to interview a teacher for this kiddo's evaluation and so we talked about him and how well he's doing my video cut out here but i wanted to thank everyone for watching and following along with me um i look forward to hopefully this summer making a lot of videos and getting into a better groove with regular posting this school year has really been something else and i'm going to be posting some more videos about the end of the school year so please follow along and like and subscribe if you want to learn more about being a school psychologist and see about my life.